So next in line, we have a special guest. He has represented India in many politically turbulent times. He has been assiduous in handling many critical situations where India's foreign policy was put to a stress test. To name it a few, coordination of the biggest evacuation of Indian nationals from Kuwait and Iraq during the Iraq war, which was in 1990s. And uh, he also represented India in Canada in the early 1980s during the Khalistan crisis. And um, he was physically assaulted by militants in Winnipeg. So uh, he has first hand, um, you know, witnessed the Iranian revolution during 1976 to 79, if I remember correctly. So he has been um, a friend of challenges. In them challenges are uh, ready, I don't know. We welcome Sri K.P. Fabian, former Indian ambassador, analyst, writer, professor in Symbiosis University, Pune. Wow, is there anything that you cannot handle? So Fabian, who is originally from Udayam Peru, Kerala, and currently residing in New Delhi. And we welcome you to share your political points, or viewpoints, wisdom to the audience. Welcome, Sri K.P. Fabian. <laughs> Thank you, I know, for the flowers in your words. Uh, well, warm greeting from cold Delhi to oh, Amma in Atlanta. <laughs> I'm honored to be with you and to see how the Republic Day is celebrated with such passion and joy and artistic excellence. Dear President Dominic, uh, I was uh, very happy to listen to your invocation of uh, Tagore. We need to remind ourselves of what uh, he said. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Mahatma Gandhi would have appreciated you are uh, including a discussion on the issues relating to farmers in India on the occasion of the Republic Day. Because conventionally, not all people, but some people, they celebrate the Republic Day in a mechanical way, congratulate each other without any introspection. We should combine celebration and introspection. Now, it is the 30th of January. And as we know, on this day in 1948, Naturam Godse, a fellow human being, shot dead Mahatma Gandhi. And we also know that shrines have been constructed in one or two parts, in some parts of India to adore Godse. In fact, the mainstream media did not tell us today that it was uh, the day of Gandhi's uh, martyrdom. Now, I want to raise a question. To what extent India has moved away from Gandhi's motto? It was not only a motto, eh, which he practiced uh, at the cost of his life. His motto of fearless fight against injustice. Now, I want to say a word about uh, the legislation. It is, uh, you know, uh, in the, I'm taking it from the Gazette of India and uh, it is, uh, one second, I got it. This is act, uh, these are acts and uh, these are not bills. Uh, 21 of 2020, I'm reading out to you, permit me, just one close, 13. No suit, prosecution or other legal proceedings shall lie against the central government or the state government or any officer of the central government or the state government or any other person in respect of anything which is in good faith done or intended to be done under this act or, or of any rules or orders made thereunder. Now, I want to draw your attention to the words 
or any other person in respect of anything which is in good faith done or intended to be done. Well, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I doubt, I doubt whether any lawyer employed by government of India would have drafted it. Now, it passes my understanding that the government of India should have been unable to explain to the farmers after so many months that the acts in question are meant to benefit them. But let me now say a word about the state of the Republic. COVID-19 is being brought under control. The economy is uh, recovering. The spirit of India is strong and indomitable. Jai Hind.